Seekers, I'm Nick. MSI's released a stack of new all-in-one liquid coolers and in regular old Gear Seekers fashion, I'm gonna show you guys how to install them. And the main reason why is because I've been seeing quite a few people in our Discord installing them and I wanted to help them out with a handy dandy little video like this one. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to install the brand new MSI MAG Core Liquid 360R in an AMD AM4 base system. Let's do it. Okay guys, now this video is for demonstration purposes only. This video is not a review of these new MSI coolers because every system, every motherboard, every case, every fan placement and every setup is different. So make sure you research what will fit into your case before buying any parts for any of your PC builds. Now, this guy is to give you the fundamental idea of how to install the MSI MAG Core Liquid 360R on an AMD AM4 based motherboard. Although this cooler does actually support Threadripper, we're not gonna cover this in this video because I feel like the cold plate is actually a little bit too small for Threadripper, but that's a whole nother video, like a whole nother topic. But we also have an Intel version of this coming as well. So stay tuned for that. We'll probably be doing that in the next week or so. So make sure you watch the whole video before answering any questions because chances are I'm actually gonna answer all of those inevitable questions in this video anyway. So let's do what we usually do and answer some of those questions right off the bat. The motherboard in this video is the MSI B550 Tomahawk. The case that we use is the Fantex Eclipse P400A and the CPU is the Ryzen 7 3700X. These parts were chosen purely for demonstration purposes only. This video is not a discussion about pricing or performance or about those parts. We just picked them because they would suit a cooler like this, simple as that. And let's answer some of those questions. So the fan placement in this video is correct. It always depends on your case and the clearances in your case. Yes, this cooler and the fans have RGB and it is a dressable RGB. Yes, your motherboard does actually require a RGB to use the lighting for the cooler and the fans for this type of insulation. Yes, you can actually put whatever fans you like on this cooler. Yes, everything that you're seeing in this video is included for the box for the insulation, except the PC itself, of course. Yes, this guide also does apply to the new 240 mil version of this cooler as well. So never fear, if you buy the smaller one, you can actually use this guide to install as well. Yes, this will work with almost every single AM4 motherboard and CPU combo you're gonna ask about in the comment section from the launch of Ryzen into the foreseeable future. Yes, it will actually work with AuraSync. It'll obviously work with Mystic Light. It'll work with Azrox Polychrome RGB and Gigabyte's RGB Fusion. No, you don't actually have to have an MSI motherboard to use this cooler at all. So yeah, never fear, you'll be good. Yes, the thermal paste is included with this cooler and no, the thermal paste is not pre-applied. Yes, you can connect any three pin addressable RGB connected fan to this. And yes, it is addressable RGB. I think I already answered that. And the pump head is also rotatable as well. So if you have the wrong orientation, you can rotate it. And no, you don't have to fill up the cooler with coolant. You don't need to top it up. You don't need to maintain it all. You basically don't need to do anything. You're good to go. So yeah, let's see what's in the box and how to install it. All right, let's take a closer look at the MSI MAG Core Liquid 360R liquid cooler and what's in the box. Okay, first up, we've got all of the mounting gear. We're going to need to install this cooler on your system and on your motherboard. There's also three addressable RGB fans from MSI. We haven't used these before, but they seem to be fairly adequate for this cooler. There's also a quick insulation guide, which we're obviously not going to be using at all for this video because that's the point of this video is to show you how to do this as quickly and as efficiently as possible. There's also the 360 cooler itself. Now this cooler is a little bit different to the other AIOs that you've probably seen, whereas the pump is located inside the radiator and not in the pump head. So it's actually just a cold plate and a cold plate head, basically. There's also a sticker on the cold plate, which you need to remove. Otherwise you'll be in a world of trouble when you're installing this cooler, but we'll come back to that a little bit later on in the video. There's also an addressable RGB cable on this as well, which you can pull off the cap to expose the pins 
buttons. This uses a daisy chainable system, but let's get all the things out and have a look. There's some included thermal paste. Now this is probably good for one installation if you're lucky. Uh, there's also a Molex 2 PWM fan connector, which is actually just a regular DC fan connector. I wouldn't be using this, so we're not going to use it. There's a TR4 mounting bracket if you wanted to use this with a Threadripper system, which I wouldn't recommend for this cooler, which so we're not going to use it in this video. This is the AIM-4 mounting bracket that you will be needing to use, so make sure you know what this looks like. We'll be coming back to this a little bit later on in the video, but yes, we will be using this. There's also the Intel mounting installation bracket as well. We will be covering this in the Intel version of this guide, so never fear, we'll look after you Intel peeps as well. There's also the backplate for the Intel installation as well, as uh, clearly embossed on the backplate, saying Intel, right? Makes sense. There's also this fan reducer cable, or the noise reducer rather. This is basically just an inline resistor that makes the fan spin slower. That's basically how it works. There's also a three-way PWM fan splitter, which we will be using in this video, so make sure you know what this looks like. There's also the TR4 mounting hardware. This is for Threadripper systems only. We will not be using this in this video, but it is there in case you wanted to use this cooler with a TR4 system. There's also Intel LGA 2011 and 2066 mounting hardware which again we won't be using in this video at all which we will cover later in another video and all of the other screws and mounting gear to mount this to your case to mount the radiator to mount the cooler to your motherboard and basically everything you're going to need and speaking of stuff we're going to need let's take a look at what we're going to need for the aim for insulation go you're going to need two of these spring loaded thumb nuts yes they are called thumb nuts relax guys <laughs> there's also two metal clips that clip over the factory retention system on all aim for motherboards so you will need to leave the factory retention system on to use this cooler and there's obviously the AM4 mounting bracket that we showed a little bit earlier in the video but let's show you how to get that bracket all set up. First of all what we're going to do is grab the bracket because we need to use it and I'm going to show you how to install this onto the head of the cooler. Now this is pretty straightforward there is a groove where it actually guides this bracket in and you just want to slide it so the opening is facing the pipes of the head itself. You don't want to do it the other way because it just won't fit. And uh, just to show you this a little bit closer, you can see that the bracket will be in line with the side of the cooler. We'll take another bit of a look at this as well so you can, you can see it will be in line and you want that opening to be towards the pipes of the head itself. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab two of these thumb nuts. I'm going to show you how to do this twice, right? And you'll also need the metal retention brackets as well. Now you can do it in this order. It's completely up to you. You can do it with it on the motherboard, but this is the way I would recommend. You slide it through the hole and just gently tighten it so it doesn't fall out. We're going to show you how to do this one more time. Put it through the hole. Yep. And just lightly tighten it in just so it grabs the thread so it doesn't fall off. Okay, the next thing we're going to do here is install the radiator into your case. Now this is the correct way to do it for this case and this type of insulation. You'll notice there is a power cable for the pump. I would like you to pass it through to the back. It's going to make your life a little bit easier on in the video to plug it all in. You'll locate 12 of these screws. These are to mount the fans. What you want to do is put the screw through the fan. Now you, you can do this in this order, it's completely up to you, but I would recommend this order. And basically what you're going to want to do is just tighten each of these screws through the case to the radiator to hold the radiator in place. And I'm going to speed this up so you don't have to sit around for three or four minutes watching me do this. But this is the way I usually recommend doing it. Just do opposing corners just to hold everything in place and rinse and repeat that process. Just make sure that they're in there and give it a final tighten and we should be good to go. Now, I would also recommend passing all those fan cables through to the backside to make your life a little bit easier and it actually makes sense for this insulation guide as well. And what we're gonna do is peel off the plastic of the cold plate so you can get rid of that sticker so your cooler can efficiently cool your CPU. Yeah, and just make sure that is actually removed because you will be in a world of trouble. Otherwise, locate the included tube of thermal paste. What we're going to do is show you how to apply this. Now this is always up for debate. Everyone always has different ways of doing this. The way that I would recommend is a P dot size little blob in the middle. I usually put it on the Z or the Z of the Ryzen on the CPU and yeah, just lower the cooler on. I would recommend installing the top clip first onto the factory retention system and then gently putting in the bottom clip 
And once they're both clipped in, just finger tighten them just to make sure they're in there and then the cooler's held into place. Get your Phillips head screwdriver and then tighten them up. Now don't do it up all the way, just do a little bit at a time to evenly distribute that pressure across the top and the bottom. Rinse and repeat until it's completely done and we should be tight and ready to move on to the next part of this installation. All right, let's get stuck into wiring. Let's do the RGB for the head itself. I'd recommend locating an addressable RGB header on your motherboard that looks a little something like this. It's called J Rainbow on this motherboard, and you're just going to plug that in. It only plugs in one way and you should be good to go. Now you'll notice there's another cable coming off. This is for daisy chaining. Pass that through to the back, and we're gonna attack that a little bit later in the video. Next up, what we're going to do is locate the pump connector to power the pump that's plugged into the radiator. What I want you to do is pass this through to the front side of your motherboard. We're going to locate the pump fan header, which is this one right here. It's labeled that. And what you're going to want to do is then plug that in and pull the tension on the cable. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is plug in the PWM fan splitter. So locate this three-way splitter that we showed a little bit earlier in the video. You want to plug this end in. We're going to locate the CPU fan header on the motherboard. It looks a little something like this. You can see the clips are out of order because that's just the way I do. Plug that in and you should be good to go. I usually plug it in from the back side and yeah, okay, we're done. Okay, let's plug those fans in. Locate the other side of that three-way splitter. Locate the PWM fan connectors. This makes the fan spin, so these do need to be plugged in. Both cables need to be plugged in. And plug all three into the splitter, rinse and repeat, and it should look a little something like this. Next up, we're going to plug in the RGB. Now, this is a different way of doing it, I will admit, but this is the way I would recommend doing it. What you're going to want to do is pull the cap off the male side. Now, this is for the fan, not for the head of the cooler and you want to plug it into the female side of the daisy chain on one of the other fans. So just plug that in. Then you'll want to pull off the cap on the male side of that one, and then get the last fan and daisy chain that in and plug in the female to male again. Now, what makes this a little bit different is we're going to be plugging the female end, which is this end right here, into the head of the cooler so they're all connected in one circuit. So what we want to do is locate the cable that we passed through a little bit earlier in the video. You want to pull the cap off the male end of this connector, just like so. And then you want to plug in that female end from the first fan in the chain into the daisy chain and you should be good to go. Come on mate, plug it in. Here we go. All right, you're good. And it will look a little something like this. There's two other things to note as well. If you want to use the fan noise reducer, this is optional. What you want to do is plug this between the PWM fan splitter and the motherboard itself. And the pump head is rotatable like I talked about in the intro. And you basically just use your hands and fingers to rotate it. There's no software. And if you had any luck, it should look a little something like this. pretty much everything in this video and if you've got any questions feel free to head on over to our tech help discord not our community one uh there's a link to that in the description down below make sure you read the comment section because 
myself or someone else probably would have already answered your question. So take that into consideration before asking anything in the comments of this video. And I, I don't say that to be mean or to be an ass hat. I just don't want to waste your time with a question that someone's probably already going to answer. But yeah, if it's not, head on over to Tech Help Discord. Anyways, guys, if you like this video and it helped you get this installed, please like and subscribe. Uh, consider clicking the join button to help support the channel or coming and getting early access to videos like this one over on Flowplan. If you hated this video, tell us who you hated about it. Hit the dislike button twice. <laughs> Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek. And guys, if this helped you, let us know. Uh, we appreciate all your love and support and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.